My problem with Sebastian Legette is that he proved me wrong and he let me down. I went about making this video to debunk the myth that Sebastian Legette only passes sideways. And we went deep, deep into the rabbit hole. I mean, hours and hours of watching tape, reviewing data, and you will be shocked at what I have found. So make sure to strap yourself in for the next few minutes while we break down just the insane performance and player that is Sebastian Legette. Now, I want to warn you that some of these data points and some of the things that we're going to look at are going to shock your core soccer beliefs. Buckle in, remove all of your biases that you feel about this player or about this team, and let's look at Sebastian Legette. So what's up, guys? I am Jake, the host of FIFA America. If you are new here, I am an FA license coach currently pursuing my UEFA B license in London. And... I love to break down player performances and coaching tactics. Here's Dax the cat coming in the <laughs> this shot here. Um, I love to break down player performances and coaching strategies and tactics, especially as it relates to the U.S. men's national team. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel as there is many more scouting videos and breakdowns like this. This is what the English FA teaches you in player scouting courses and four corners. It's in the name, right? It takes and breaks down four different categories within a player's abilities. The first is obviously technique and performance. That's one corner. The second is social. The third is psychological. And the fourth is physical. So let's just start at the social piece for Sebastian Legette. Now, he's married to Becky G. And if you guys didn't know, the G stands for goddamn Sebastian. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. That's a very off-brand joke for me, but I wrote it down. I thought it was funny at the time. It's not. Um, let's keep going. So he, he is the captain. Um, sometimes when he plays for the U.S. Men's National Team, he is a preferred player for not just Greg, but also for his club coaches as well. Now, he was just traded from the LA Galaxy to the New England Revolution. We'll see how that goes down. But I mean, that is basically Bruce Arena taking a preferred player from the LA Galaxy to the New England Revolution. So just from a social aspect and everything considered from a team, you know, is he a captain? Does he show leadership traits? Do coaches prefer him? That seems to be positive. Now, there's one thing I want to show you guys because I feel like there's one more thing that's just not getting enough attention. And that is when he scored his goal against Honduras. I want you to watch very closely who is celebrating with him and where did everybody else go on the team to celebrate? I mean, to me, that essentially looks like everybody was too tired to care or went to Ricardo Pepe to celebrate with him for his good play. And that, to me, is a bit worrying that only Christian Roldan was there to celebrate with Sebastian Legette for the first 20 seconds that he was standing in the corner. Now, if we move to physical, Sebastian Legette isn't the biggest guy. He's not the smallest guy. He uses his body just fine. I mean, that that's kind of the, without watching this video, right, without scouting him, without breaking down any numbers, that's really how most people feel about Sebastian Legette is he's fine. He's fine. But I'm going to show you why it's a very different story. So let's talk about two things that I think really just put this all on the line for us. The first is psychological. Now, two major events have happened in the last few years for Sebastian Legette. The first is a really horrible foot injury that occurred during the 2018 season, and it took him more than a year to get back on the pitch, not just for his club team, but he really had to work his way back into the national team picture as well. And the second happened in August of last year when he lost his sister. I really want to say this because I feel for Sebastian Legette, I hurt for him all of the best vibes that I can provide out to the universe go to Sebastian Legette for losing such a close family member. And after the Panama game, he was benched and didn't even dress for the game right after that. And a lot of people were talking about, you know, he's had a tough year. He lost his sister. He, he deserves some slack in his play from fans. And while it's really hard to talk about this topic in a way that's empathetic. I really feel like it's still up to Sebastian Legette and it's his responsibility to let the coaches or the staff know 
that he is not 100% mentally there or he's not emotionally invested to wear the jersey and fight for the crest. Now, this is to say that you are more than allowed. You are able to do anything that you want in your life as long as it doesn't hurt others. And we as fans have no reason to have any ill will towards you. Now, if you make the specific decision to put your step forward, put your name on the roster and put on the jersey, then we're going to expect 100% commitment and it doesn't really absolve you of responsibility while you're on the field. If you told the coaches, you know what, I've had a really tough few months. I'm going to take a break to get mentally right, to get psychologically right. Nobody at all can fault him. Now, another piece of psychological, and this is going to move us into the performance and technique piece, is, is this player able to be creative? Are they able to try new things? Are they confident enough to try new things. And here's really where the data just broke everything down for us. I think you guys are going to go absolutely batshit insane at seeing what I'm seeing. Now, the technical and tactical piece really marries up to that psychological value of trying new things. And then the technical and technique pieces, can you actually pull that off? Now, the other piece that you really need to look for if you're trying to break down a player's performance or analyze a game is... Did this player know what his next action was at all times? And was he able to find the best player in the best supporting positions? Now, we're going to take a look at some clips. And I want you to keep in mind of something we talked about in a previous scouting video of Yunus Musa. And that is having your head on a swivel at all times, especially as a midfielder, being able to look over your shoulder and know in your mind basically a mental map of where all the other 20, 21? (laughs) All the other 21 players are on the field at any given time. He takes seconds upon seconds of making a decision, and all of the good opportunities forward close up. Now, if you don't have that mental map, you don't know your best option, there's downstream effects, right? Like you you start to not know where you're going to go or what you're going to do once you receive the pass. So let's before we really like start just punching into <laughs> Sebastian Lejet's nose, I want to show you guys some good clips and things that he's done well over the last year. Okay, so this is going to be a really important piece of the puzzle because we just talked about having your head on a swivel, right? We talked about knowing where everybody else is on the field. We talked about looking over your shoulder. And this is one of the few times that I was able to find where Sebastian Legia actually does that, and look how well the play turns out. So right there, right before, um, we're we're in second, so right on that still screen, right, Sebastian Legia is looking over his left shoulder, he sees where the defenders are, and as soon as he receives the ball, he knows where he's going with it. He knows exactly where his supporting players are and what the best situation is. Now, here's the goal again against Honduras. We already watched this because of the celebration, but I actually think it's a pretty nice move by him to be ready on the back post for the goal. Okay, here Sebastian Jet is go- about to score a goal on a one-time, um, not a volley, but a one-timer. And I just want you guys to ask yourself, so good play, nice goal, good positioning. I want you to ask yourself right now, could Gianluca Busio or Luca De La Torre have done that? I really think that what Sebastian Legette just did with that goal was nothing special. That's what I expect from a a professional player. Uh, I really feel like someone like Gianluca Busio or someone like Luca De La Torre could have done exactly what Sebastian Legette did, and that's more of an expectation. Now, here is one clip, one clip that I was able to find of Sebastian Legette doing well in tight spaces. Really nice ability to find the pass there and just scraped it out with enough time. Now here is an MLS game where he's able to get an assist. And I want you to keep this in mind because we're going to see some clips in a few minutes where he really takes himself out of the play. This is what I want to see from Sebastian Legette, making the inside runs, beating a defender, and putting the ball back into the box at the penalty spot. For the goal. Okay, so those were the good clips from Sebastian Legette. And keep in mind, 
I look through highlights. I look through uh, Y Scout. <laughs> I downloaded a ton of clips about him, and those are really the best clips that I could find. So not quite a highlight reel, um, but you know he has his moments where he's able to put everything together. Now let's watch some clips that maybe tell a little bit different of a story. And this is the most important important part of the video, guys. If you haven't watched or paid attention or you've just been like dozing off, <laughs> then watch this part of the video because I think it tells you everything you need to know about Sebastian Legette and if he's worthy of the U.S. men's national team. Okay, so this is against Panama, and this is kind of an infamous clip already in the community because he is going to take the ball on his left foot, which is actually the right way to receive this ball. And look at his body shape. It's actually pretty good. He's facing up. He knows exactly where his defenders are that he needs to beat. He has a left winger that's checking to the ball. He has a left back. I believe that's George Bello making a run to the side. And we could easily dribble as well into that space. But watch what he does here. His first touch is immediately backwards back to a center back. I think that's one of the most egregious opportunities that we can see. And again, in still frame, just so you guys can see how much space was available and what the field looked like. And Sebastian Legette really let us and himself and his team down in that area. Now, this next clip is very important because it shows a decision-making factor. It's not necessarily a technical ability, but it shows something that I've seen a lot in Sebastian Legette's play as I've been diving down into this rabbit hole, that he really tries to hide himself behind defenders. And as a midfielder, you really want to be showing for the ball. You want to be helping your team as much as possible. But what Sebastian Legette constantly does is put himself behind defenders where he's not available for the team. And he's also not dragging defenders. So if you look at this play in particular, the two midfielders that are in front of him, they don't really care about Sebastian Legette. And the defender that he's trying to occupy, well, he already has two attackers that he needs to be aware of. So in this play, Number seven, I think that's Paul Ariola has to give a floating ball into Zardes in the middle. But Sebastian Legette had plenty of space in the middle of the pitch there to receive the ball and didn't support his team. Now, again, I want you to be thinking about this as we watch those clips because it's going to be a constant factor. Now, Sebastian Legette's here in the defending part of the field. He picks it up deep and he has a few options to go passes it back to John Brooks, and makes himself available on the wing. Okay, now, let's see. Anthony Robinson is making a run up, and I think that's Pulisic that is in space, or Tyler Adams if he passes it to his right foot, then Tyler Adams is able to pick his head up and have the ball in a dangerous area moving the ball forward. But what happens? He is passing it back and starting recycling the play over. Now, here we have Anthony Robinson. I want you guys to watch a little bit of John Brooks's uh, <laughs> face, his emotions right here, because Sebastian Legette just passed it back to the goalkeeper when, again, he could have put it on Tyler Adams' right foot for him to move forward. And John Brooks is saying he has his arms out, literally. He's screaming at Legette, play the ball forward. Why are you going back? I think that shrug from <laughs> John Brooks says it all from us. Now here, Sebastian Legette is making a run from the middle. He goes to the outside, and I want to see him take on the defender. And Brendan Aronson makes a great decision here to run into space. This is a wonderful position for the U.S. men's national team to be in. But look how the play closes up as soon as Sebastian Legette takes his first touch. It's negative. His touch is almost always negative. And that is really one of the biggest areas of improvement that I need to see from Sebastian Legette. He checks here, but his pass is off the mark. And instead of putting it into space where Tyler Adams again can run into space, maybe get it across the field to Kellen Acosta, it goes back to our defense. Now again, Sebastian Legette here. Tyler Adams' right foot. Put it on Tyler Adams' right foot and you've got yourself a stew. You're cooking. What happens? Takes a little bit more time, gives it to Pulisic with his back towards goal, and Pulisic does a nice job to get fouled. 
Okay. Now, did you notice how long that took Sebastian and Jet to make a decision? Now, remember how I talked about having your head on a swivel, how Yunus Musa is always looking behind him, always creating a map of what the field looks like. Sebastian Lejet did not do that in this instance. And look, I just want us to go back and watch how much time it took Sebastian Lejet to make a decision here from when he receives the ball. One, two, three, four. So almost four seconds where he needs to pick his head up on receiving the ball if you notice, he didn't even move. He was standing completely still, surveying the field, seeing what his next option is. And that is the difference, folks, between a player that is ready for the national stage to make a true difference on the national team and someone like Sebastian Lejet, who is good enough for MLS. And I sit here, right? I am not a judge of character. I'm not a judge of player performances. I just think in reality, an objective view you can't think that someone that takes four seconds to stand still and make a decision and have their head up is just as good as someone like Gianluca Busio or Luca De La Torre, who, if they did that in their respective European leagues, will get their heads torn off. And we've actually seen it with Gianluca Busio. In one of his first games for Venezia, he gets the ball dispossessed because he takes too long. The ball is scored on the counterattack because of his action. And this is the difference, guys. That one clip tells you everything you need to know. And even his supporting run. So he's playing a one-two, right? He's trying to make space. He didn't make any space. He ran into dead space behind a defender. Again, absolving himself from any responsibility and giving all of the responsibility of the play to his teammates. Again, negative pass back didn't know where everybody was behind him, and his run is immediately behind a defender so that he doesn't get the returning ball. All right, here, Sebastian Lujet is finally going to try and make a forward pass, and it's off the mark. I really feel like, again, he doesn't try it very often because he knows that it's a riskier play, and he doesn't want the responsibility of losing the ball he can do that for his teammates. Now, again, guys, when you're looking at analyzing a game or if you're, say you're a player, right, and you're trying to watch professionals play, something that you might want to do is say, okay, if I'm in this position, what would I do? And what does the professional player do? And I feel like here is just what is happening? Like, on, on top of everything else that we've seen, okay, Sebastian Lejet picks up his head, has all the space in the world, has Brendan Aronson running, has Christian Pulisic and Kellen Acosta checking to the ball in space. And what, I, I want to know, what do you guys think will happen? What do you guys think will happen? Passes it to the side. Honestly, I really didn't want to believe the things that are being said about him. I came into this video trying to do enough of the work and the, the kind of groundwork to say that Sebastian Lejet deserves to be here. And I just want to show you guys one thing. I think it's the craziest point of all. You know, we can take the subjective view of those clips that we just saw about what we think he should have done versus what he did do. I want to show you some concrete data, some objective facts about his passing. Now, I went digging. I went into the Sebastian Legette rabbit hole for hours and hours to make this video. Look at this chart. It, it literally does not go forward. I mean, guys, this chart doesn't have data for forward passes. It doesn't even have data for forward passes. If So, guys, if you just sat back and said, Holy moly, Jake, that was really cool. Thank you for showing me that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because there is a lot more scouting videos where you will say the exact same thing, and I'm sure you'll enjoy all of them. But guys, this is bad, right? Like This is really bad. There is no forward passes. There is, this is the data that you want to see. Now let's look at the categories that he's in for attacking midfielders 
in MLS. Now, this is attacking midfielders. I want you to keep this in mind. Now, there's 28 teams in MLS. There's probably one to two attacking midfielders on any given team. Sebastian Leggett, 19th in goals, 11th in assists, 34th in shots, 59th in passes, 16th in crosses, 33rd in offensive duels, and 150th in defensive duels. Guys, if we're playing a pressing style on our national team, do we really want someone that is 33rd in the league in offensive pressures for attacking midfielders and 150th in defensive pressures? We also talked about how Sebastian Lejet is not the smallest guy, but he's 73rd in aerial duels. He's 35th in dribbles with a low success rate of 41%. I mean, 64th in progressive runs, 106th in progressive passes, 22nd in deep completions, 140th in recoveries, and 127th. 127 midfielders were ahead of him in counter-pressing recoveries. Is that the player we want on our team when we're playing a pressing possession style? Now let's just answer this question. Is, is Sebastian Legette good enough for the U.S. men's national team? Honestly, I did my best to find out why he would be worthy, why he should be on this team. And I can't see how players like Gianluca Busio or Luca De La Torre aren't more worthy of this position. Or if we move Gio Reyna to an eight and take on another winger, like uh, I'm starting to think, guys, that Legette shouldn't make these rosters. I mentioned throughout the video that Yunus Musa at just 18 are doing some of the things that we harped on in a negative light for Sebastian Legette. He's doing them so, so well. Now, I want you to go back and watch this Yunus Musa scouting video. Even if you've already watched it before, I think with the reference that you have now of Sebastian Legette and how our two eights can play so differently and have such a different impact for the U.S. men's national team, you really need to go watch this video next, even if you've watched it before, while this is fresh on your mind. And I will see you there.